In wound care, the only endpoint recognized in clinical practice is complete wound closure. As a clinician, we are judged based on whether or not we close a patient's wound. We want to be judged on how well we are practicing medicine and preventing amputations. But we have become very siloed in thinking we should close every wound tomorrow. Wound care specialists should be looking into how they can improve microcirculation by maximizing the overall vascular health of patients. Precisely for this, there is a greater need to work cooperatively across disciplines for higher quality wound care. Imaging techniques can change what wound care specialists do. Connecting surgical and non-surgical care is the key to reducing readmissions for wound patients. A diabetic foot ulcer is a sign of systemic disease and successful management requires the expertise of an interdisciplinary team that can provide integrated focused care in a diabetic foot clinic. The team has to be aware of three distinct pathologies in the diabetic foot, neuropathy, ischemia and infection. But on a practical level, the diabetic foot can be divided into two entities, the neuropathic foot with its characteristic plantar neuropathic ulcers and the neuroischemic foot with its ulcers on the margins of the foot. It's essential to realize that a combination of neuropathy and ischemia can be devastating. There is a disconcerting speed of the natural history and a wide range of comorbidities are found in patients presenting with both conditions, making these neuroischemic patients extremely vulnerable. Furthermore, by the time that the peripheral arteries are involved, the ischemic patient is likely to have a neurological and vascular impairment elsewhere. It is also essential to be aware that neuroischemic feet need long-term care and follow-up. Care of the neuroischemic patient also involves routine preventive foot care, the updating education to avoid trauma, diagnosing problems early, rapid and aggressive care of ulcers, regular arterial and graft surveillance, and the prov provision of statins and aspirin for secondary prevention of arterial disease. Thus, the long-term follow-up care of the diabetic patient with peripheral vascular disease is an essential component of su successful management. Aggressive treatments of infection is essential both in the neuropathic foot and the neuroischemic foot, starting with broad spectrum antibiotic therapy and then targeted therapy according to the bacteria isolated. It is crucial to have a working knowledge of the principal bacteria and the local antibiotic sensitivities, including awareness of the prevalence of resistant organisms. However, in, a, in every patient, individual sensitivities of each organism isolated on culture should be sought to guide rational antibiotic therapy. There should be also be close cooperation between the microbiology, laboratory, and the diabetic foot service, while antibiotic therapy should be accompanied by debridement of infective and necrotic tissue. The question that arises is, can we change the microcirculation? What we can do is maximize the overall vascular health of the patient. We can work on getting patients to stop smoking, screen patients for sleep apnea, get an echocardiogram before we use compression wrap and move a large amount of extra vascular fluid centrally to avoid tipping someone into congestive heart failure, management of hypertension, analyze the right-sided heart pressure and lower central venous pressure. We can also assess microcirculation before and after a procedure, before and after using energy-based modalities, or we could use an angiosome-based revascularization procedure and measure success or failure. We can measure the microcirculation on the plantar surface of the foot, where pigmentation is not an impact, and that could act as a surrogate for the overall mass macrovascular status. Ultimately, this should lead to adequate macrovascular status with the end result being adequate delivery of oxygen and the formation of ATP. For this, biopsy with NMR spectroscopy to assess the ATP levels of wounds before and after procedures can be used. Thank you.